Hey everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and in this video, not a tutorial, this is going to be a more of an educational video to show you and share with you what you end up with, not cute, if you're a beginner in garment sewing. I'm going to walk through what I have seen my students make, uh, the kind of mistakes that they make in person and that I've heard from beginning students also that they tend to do. So I'm going to make this not flattering top, okay? using techniques and skills that a beginner tends to have. And so what I want you to see with this video is that if you end up with something like this, which is not really flattering, at least in my opinion for my body type, it's not what I expected and it's definitely not what I like to wear. I have an hourglass figure and this top right here is doing nothing for it because it's so big, it's too baggy for my taste, sleeves are too long, and as you can see, I didn't even finish the top because at this point, for me, it's not worth it to complete it. There is so much wrong with this video, which is what yields me this, okay? And so if you're following along with this Butterick Pattern 6214 Sew Along series, stay tuned because in the next video, I'll be sharing with you tips and tricks and step-by-step -step instructions on how you really want to make this top to make it both cute, flattering, and more professional looking than this. Now, if you're a beginner or someone who has never tried making clothes from using commercial sewing patterns, or if you've just had a bunch of failed uh, attempts at trying to make your own clothes, watch this video. Watch it all the way through and see if there are things that you can pick out that you know you've done in the past, things that you think, I don't see anything wrong with that. Why is it wrong? In the next video, I'll cover step by step what is wrong and what not to do so that you don't end up with something like this. So this is for educational purposes and I just want you to see what happens because most of the time when professionals are teaching us how to make our clothes, nobody really shows you the failed attempts. Nobody shows you this is probably what you're gonna do at home when you're by yourself and an instructor is not there to help you. So I'm taking a different approach and I wanna show you what happens when you are at home by yourself trying to decipher commercial sewing pattern instructions and what you tend to get. I don't want you to get down on yourself and think that it's you or maybe that sewing patterns are not made to fit your body. Every single one of us is unique and sewing clothes is not easy. If they asked me if it was easy, I would say yes because I have over a decade of experience making clothes, right? If you're new to it, it's not gonna be easy. And so like I tell my students, there is a checklist of stuff that you need to be able to know how to do before you jump into even the most simple project. So if you are excited about trying to make your own clothes, if you know that you're gonna buckle down and just work through all the problems and things that you have, Know that this is a lot of trial and error. If you think you're gonna grab a pattern, pick some cute fabric and make yourself a cute top, it usually does not work that way on your first, second, third, or fourth attempt, okay? So we will cover all the different things that I want you to know and things that you need to know going forward if you wanna try some more complex projects, okay? So just watch the video through, sit back, relax, enjoy it. And then in the next video of the series, we'll talk about why not to do everything <laughs> I'm about to show you here. All right, so we go to our store, we pull up the pattern by the number, and then we see that they have them in two different sizes, size ZZ and size Y. They each include their own range of sizes, so extra small, small, and medium, and then large, extra large, and extra large. So I'm pretending I'm a beginner here. Remember, we're gonna flip over, assuming you even know that this is back here in the back flap. I'm gonna take my bust, waist, and hip measurement and circle where I land on here. So for me, at the bust, I land in between large and extra large. The waist, I land in extra large. And the hip, I land in between extra large and 2XL. So I'm all over, okay, all over the place here with sizes. So for me, as a beginner, say I'm thinking, what do I do? Well, maybe I should do the extra large because it's kind of in the middle. And if we were to take the average, we would end up here. So this is how a lot of beginners I find things. So let's say extra large, okay? So I'm gonna grab this one because this packet has the extra large size. If you're just tuning into the video, remember that this is not the tutorial. This is the one where I'm doing things just as a beginner would so you can see why you oftentimes will end up 
with messed up results or a garment that doesn't fit and that you're not happy with because it didn't turn out how you expected. So if you weren't able to get both patterns, you probably would just pick up one that you think matches based on your measurements and the size. So let's continue. Then say you have your pattern, okay, you pick out some fabric. Okay, on the back of the pattern, I'm reading here, it says design for lightweight woven fabrics and stable knits. So I'm a quilter, cotton, quilting cottons for me are pretty lightweight. So I think, okay, I can use some quilting cotton that I have some yardage of, and that's what I'll use. Notice that there's also fabrics down here, but if you're a beginner, you're probably like, I have no idea what chalice is, I have no idea what cotton knits are, I have no idea what linen or rayon, and your local big box store probably doesn't have many of these options. So you say, hey, I'll try it with some quilting cotton in a print that I like. So now you open up the pattern envelope, take out the tissue paper, kind of glance at the instructions, and then here's what I see them do. So most beginners will cut out all the pattern pieces and just think, okay, now I'm ready to work with something. I followed all the extra large marks on every single pattern piece in the tissue paper, and I cut them all out. So now they kind of look at the pattern instructions, a little bit lost, trying to decipher it and decide, okay, I don't want a pocket, so I'll just separate that piece. So next I see the front and the back. So let's cut out the fabric and we'll cut out the front and the back pieces. Now, obviously, if you know how to sew, there are so many things wrong with what I'm doing. But again, remember this video is for educational purposes. I'm trying to show you what I've seen beginner students do. So I'm cutting out the front and the back and I see the pattern says put it on the fold. So that's what I'm doing on the fold that came already on the fabric. We're going to place some weights and continue to cut the pattern pieces. I follow the edges, right? So we cut one out. Now I can remove my weights and the pattern piece. So now we're gonna move on to the other piece and do the same thing, tracing, you know, cutting with the line. You can use scissors or a rotary cutter, right? Now, if you know how to sew, obviously I'm skipping all the reference lines, the notches and everything, and this is what beginners tend to do. So now we're gonna cut the sleeve next. Notice I'm placing it on here any which way. It happens to be that it fits that way. There is no reference as to grain lines, as to nothing, really. And so you're going to see what we end up with. And just remember that as you're skipping steps in the preparation of the fabric and cutting out your pieces, you're then going to only compound these issues by the time you get to the sewing machine. So continue to watch. We're making now, we're put, attaching based on the diagrams in the instruction sheet. I place the front and the back pieces. Uh, together with pretty sides touching we're placing a couple pins here because we are going to get ready to sew along both shoulder pieces or shoulder seams up top there and then uh, along the sides as well then at the sewing machine i set up my guide to five eighths of an inch for the seam allowance because i read that somewhere in the pattern sheet and i'm going to stitch across both shoulder seams and down both sides of the top and in my experience this is probably one of the most disappointing times where the beginner gets to the sewing part and now they can actually see a top coming together only to find out that it is not going to fit them because the wrong size was cut out. So now you're like, okay, I'm putting together a top. I know that I have these fancy pressing tools, so let me use my iron and a tailor's ham. Let me press these seams open. And here you are thinking that you're just moving along just fine. But maybe you're super excited at this point to see an actual top coming together. So you decide at this point, well, let me try it on. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, uh, I don't think so. What was the point of going through this process when this is exactly not what I wanted? So now this is a turning point. Are you going to continue to complete the top or are you going to put it away altogether and completely decide that sewing garments is not for you? Let's say you continue with it. You head back to the pattern instruction sheet and you kind of look at the instructions and it's telling you something about bias tape to finish the neckline. And you're like, okay, let's prep it. So you read the instructions. You see that in the de definitions in the key, it says stay stitching and what it is. So you decide to stay stitch the neckline and the armholes just as you're instructed to in uh, the pattern instructions. Okay, so you're going to move on with the pattern and you're thinking maybe... Maybe when I attach the sleeves, it won't look as big. Maybe when I finish the neckline, it won't look as big. And I find that beginners tend to do this all the time. The ones that are kind of trying to make the best out of the project. If you look in the mirror and it does not fit like you want to, 
it's not going to get any better by you sewing other things onto it, right? Until you understand where the problem areas are, uh, you know, how your body differs from the pattern uh, and the pattern pieces, it's going to be tough to just like continue along and think that it's going to fix itself because that's not really how it works. So we stitch up the sleeves. And now if you recall from cutting out my patterns, I have no notches. I had no reference marks. So now it's kind of this game of like, uh, let's play a guessing game of where these sleeves are going to go. And if you've never attached set in sleeves, you're going to be thinking, well, how in the world am I going to put this sleeve and the sleeve hole or the arm side uh, pretty sides touching so that it can be sewn together? So you sit there, you're kind of figuring out which sleeve goes where and just cross your fingers that you don't attach it on backwards, right? So assuming that you're able to get this on and you don't completely distort the curve and all the bias edges that are cut on these curved pieces, Let's assume that you're able to get it on and continue sewing so that you can now attach both sleeves. So now you start to pin the edges. And if you get through pinning one of these sleeves with no reference points, you're probably going to be like, uh, how in the world do they get these two pieces to fit? But nonetheless, say you take it to the sewing machine and you do it. You work with your fabric pieces and you manage to sew that first sleeve on. And just in case you're wondering how I was able to do this, I'm pretty good at making pieces fit, but this was tough, okay? <laughs> this is not something that a beginner would tackle. You'll have pleats and puckers and pinches in the fabric all throughout that sleeve, and you're going to really hate sewing clothes after you're done with, like, such a nightmare experience as this. But I want you all to see what happens, and I want you to tell me in the comments whether or not the shirt gets better after I've added the sleeves. So don't fool yourself, okay? When you try it on, it's, it's going to tell you exactly what's going on. So we'll stitch on the second sleeve now, and then I'll try it on so you can see how it looks. Now, after we sew both sleeves, we give it a press. And just from looking at it like this, you can see the bulk in the seam. The sleeves are not setting correctly, not to mention we have 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance still inside of there on each sleeve. So now you decide to try it on. And let me know in the comments if you think that adding the sleeves improved the top. For me, I think the answer is no. It didn't get any better with sleeves on. It still looks a mess. All right, so hopefully when you get to this point and you kind of try it on and you see that it's not really what you were expecting, you don't like the way it fits, maybe you don't like the way the fabric feels on you, hopefully you don't just keep continuing and finishing off the hemline and the neck band and all that kind of stuff because you're just gonna be end up wasting more of your time. Now, this is not a complete and total loss. There are ways, of course, to take things in. If you end up with a project that you don't really like, if it's bigger, you can most of the time work with it, right? To kind of taper it down, put some darts in some places, take it in on the sides and things like that. But if you're a beginner, you're already gonna be looking and ending up with something like this. Chances are you probably don't already know how to adjust or alter a pattern, right? Because you're a beginner and you're just starting off. So if you can't really follow a pattern step by step just from the pieces and you end up with something you don't like, don't think it's you. It's just that you don't yet have the knowledge and experience and all the trial and error episodes of trying your hand at dressmaking and garment sewing that you don't have the knowledge that you need in order to look out for things before you get to the point where you've already sewn it. Does that make sense? So. Not a complete loss, but definitely not cute and not what I'm going for. Now, I know my body, you've heard me say it before, I have a really high waist and I have an hourglass figure. So why would I wear something like this when I know I don't like it? The sleeves are too long. And at this point, I can say, well, I should have gone with the cap sleeve because the pattern did give us two options, right? So these are things that as a beginner, when I say trial and error, these are the things that you, if you're trying it out by yourself at home, that you're going to go through. Even though it's a waste of time and fabric, they're learning times, okay? Because now I know. If I try on the sleeve and I see it's down here, I know I'm not going to like it already just based on the length because I know that I made this one like that and the sleeve was way too long for me. I want something a little bit higher. The same thing applies to the length of the garment. If it's too long already, jot down some notes. Look at the clothes that you have in your closet measure from the shoulder down to the hemline and see the majority of my tops tend to be however many inches long because I like for them to hit me at my high hip, mid hip, low hip, wherever it is. So part of this game is to understand 
your body, your measurements, and your fashion aesthetic. What do you like, okay? Some of you out there might say, well, I like that top. I would totally wear that. That's great. The point of sewing your own clothes is that you get to make what you want to wear. I made this. I don't want to wear it, okay? So I need to make adjustments. I need to go back, look at the instructions, see where I went wrong. Was it the fabric? Was it the sizing? Sewing is not easy, guys. It can be frustrating at times, but it is so much fun. If it was easy, everybody would be making their own clothes because if you can make it to fit your body, there's not gonna be any other garment out there that's more comfortable or better fitting, right? If you know how you need to make it to fit your body, to accentuate what you want to accentuate, to feel how you want to feel in clothes, everything is so based on the individual. If I see a loose top, I'm not gonna get it because it needs to fit over my thighs, my hips here. I know this is wider. I know I like to wear stuff that cinches me in at the waist. Look at how much ease this size has. So it can be frustrating and look at my waist. Way more slimming if I had something that tapered in at the waistline, okay? So I went by my measurements, I cut the size that I was supposed to cut out according to my size measurements, but I don't like it. So we have to come back and revisit and see what is it that we need to do to taper and cater that pattern, those pattern pieces to fit our body and our style. So needless to say, I'm not gonna continue to finish off the neckline or hem, the sleeves or the bottom hemline. It's not worth it at this point. I think I've uh, made my point and painted a good enough picture for you all to understand what can happen. Now, watching this video, if you've made it all the way now here to the end, if you're a beginner, you're probably wondering, where did you go wrong? Everything looked like you followed the pattern. It looked like you put it together, the sleeves fit and all that. Now, if you're someone who has had successful results, and has a lot of experience in garment sewing, you probably were screaming like, what is this lady doing? You're doing it all wrong, right? And so that is where the difference, I think the gap in education from commercial sewing patterns is. And I think that's probably one of the reasons that so many independent sewing pattern companies have come about. Because as a business owner, a small business owner, if you are the individual behind your brand, you tend to have you're more invested in the brand. So you tend to put out more information so that your customers have a better experience, uh, learn more about how to sew their own clothes so they can have successful results, right? Because then that's gonna keep them coming back to you. Whereas larger corporations, that's not necessarily the case. So is this pattern my favorite? Not really. Do I know how to make it work to what I want? Yes, as you can see in some of the other garments that I've made using the exact same pattern. So, one, don't use quilting cottons. <laughs> in the next video, I'll go over some good fabric choices for you and I'll be uh, linking you to some of my favorites that you can use that will help you get a cuter silhouette, silhouette shall we say, okay? This is not a lightweight fabric. Because you see how where my bust is, it tends to like tent out like that. That means the fabric is not that drapey. If it was really thin and drapey, it will kind of just cup over the curves of my body and fall and kind of waterfall, right? And drape down. Quilting cotton is more of a medium weight woven fabric. And it ain't cute for this top. There are some patterns that you can make work with quilting cottons. This for me at least ain't it, okay? So we see what we ended up with. There was so many mistakes, so many mistakes in what I did. I literally was trying to do the worst job I could, really. But here's what happens. Do I still end up with a top? Yes. Does it fit? I guess, right? Because it's bigger. Is it what I'm going for? No. Does it look cute? No. Are there puckers in the sleeves? Yes. I didn't mark any notches. There were no reference points, no guides. I was able to sew it because I have experience sewing and I can make it work. But if you're a beginner and you don't have that experience, tell you the truth, you're probably not going to get past the set in sleeves. So don't do what I just did in this video. Instead, grab your pattern, meet me back here, and in the next video, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel, we're gonna go over everything and how to make this Butterick pattern work a little bit better, I think. Now, if you enjoyed this kind of educational video here, remember this was not a tutorial, do not do as I showed you in this video, you wanna do what I'm gonna show you in the next video of this series, okay? If you enjoyed it though, give it a thumbs up, 
leave me a comment below and let me know what you learned from this video. Are there things that I showed you that you tend to do? Uh, did this end up with a result that has happened to you in the past when you use commercial sewing patterns? Are you looking forward to the next video series? Uh, just give me some feedback and let me know how you're feeling and what you're thinking about this sew along. So if you're just joining in and you haven't been following along, you might need to grab a couple things. If you haven't yet purchased your fabric, I would say don't do it yet. Wait until the next video where I'm going to share with you some more information that will kind of better be able to guide you in choosing the correct fabrics, okay? And then I'll share with you some links on where you can get some of my favorite fabrics that I have made the shirt in and I know will work. So if you're not too familiar with textile contents and different fiber contents and things, don't get your fabric just yet. But if you need my favorite clip and slide measuring tape or you need to get the pattern, the links are below for you. So thanks again for watching this video. Don't forget to click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future videos. Also head on over to craftygemini.com, that's my website. And at the top of the page, enter your email address so you can join our email newsletter and that way you'll also get emails from us with updates, coupon codes, and the latest happenings for Crafty Gemini. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.